Hi, I'm Rich. And I'm Chris. And since leaving Feel for a Friend, we've decided to work at this lovely place in London, ACM, and we're here to answer questions for Kerrang. Going back, my first memory of music would probably be sitting in front of the fire in my family home. My dad was massively into Pink Floyd, and I remember hearing the intro to um, Money, the cash registers, and that sweet bass line. I suppose that's why I started playing bass, to be honest with you. So yeah, my first memory was Pink Floyd Money. Yep. Uh, mine would be, um, my mother's mother played piano, and so I was always kind of surrounded by music growing up. Uh, going for long car drives and just having Bohemian Rhapsody being played over and over <laughs> and over again. And then uh, I have a brother who's 14 years older than me, and he was a big fan of Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath, and he had all the vinyls, so we just, I remember seeing the covers and being like, oh my God, this is so cool. So yeah, that kind of got me into music, I think, and that was my introduction. Funny enough, the way I got into music was through a funny route. It was a vet started off trying to get out recorder lessons, and there was guitar lessons available at the school I went to. And I was like, hey, recorder's not very cool, guitar and bass is. So I went to learn bass, and just on the off chance, I absolutely loved it and seemed very natural at it. And literally, as soon as I picked it up, it's all I wanted to do. And uh, I was so headstrong that I was going to have a career in music. I would basically let nothing get in my way. I think that uh, growing up in Wales, especially like in the kind of communities that we grew up in, there's not a lot to do there. Yeah. And it, uh, it's kind of like you go into like a bunch of different groups, really. It's like either you become like, you know, obsessed with rugby and kind of want to play for Wales and go down the rugby route, or you kind of don't do anything, <laughs> or you uh, join a band or you form a band with your mates and it's just something to do to pass the time and sort of, you know, I think that I nagged my dad when I was younger for a guitar. It took him, it took me like two years of nagging for him to finally cave in and buy me one. But uh, yeah, ultimately it was as soon as I got it, it was like a competition then between me and my brother and my friends who could be, you know, who could play the fastest, who could like, who could learn the hardest Metallica song at the time. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just something to do and it was to pass the time and then as you start writing your own songs, it just becomes, a, you know, an absolute obsession and love. And it's like, you know, you you kind of want to do anything to to make you know to be able to do that every day. And uh, lucky, luckily enough, we were. It's quite a hard question, really, isn't it? But I just enjoy playing it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I gravitated towards the bass just because I love the the fact that it's kind of. It kind of bridges the gap between the guitars and the drums. You know, it's such an important role in the music. It can, you know, fundamentally completely change the harmony um, rhythmically. And I think it's such a dynamic instrument. I mean, to me, bass can be a lot like, you know, like a piano in sound. And uh, it's manly, it's big. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I was obsessed with Guns N' Roses as a kid, and I just thought Slash looked like the coolest person who's ever lived. You know, with his top hat and sort of big long hair and low guitar. And uh, yeah, that kind of, I was just like, yeah, I want to be able to do that. And then I heard uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And I was like, I have to be able to do that. So yeah, that was kind of pretty much it for me. It was like, it kind of seemed like a cooler instrument than the, the piano or the violin. And sort of, I don't know, I had a feeling that I wouldn't really stick with the violin, so. I kind of nagged, like I said, nagged my dad to get a guitar and eventually got one. And that was cool as bass, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, my tip for aspiring bass players would be to stop just thinking of yourself as a bass player, think of yourself as a musician. Don't just listen to bass players. Listen to, you know, all instruments, you know, just draw influence from everything. Just think of yourself as a musician and you'll go a lot further. Uh, I'd say for any you know young aspiring guitarist, it's be it'd be to listen to as many different types of music as you can, and then you know try and imitate what you hear him by you know trying to write music in that sort of style. Uh, I think that when you do that, you develop you know uh, your own unique way of you know or approach to playing music. So I think that yeah, for anybody who's learning to play and learning to write or wanting to write, just try and write in as many different styles as you possibly can. Oof. Oh god, that's, that's hard. Yeah, it's definitely hard. Um, my favourite moment with of being in funeral for a friend. Um, t there's a lot of moments. There's multiple ones. Yeah. Um, I know this. Uh, it might sound a bit 
stupid, but our last show, maybe. <laughs> that was, you know, it's very memorable and uh, it's really emotional. So it's, I think for me, that really stands out as a, uh, a, a pinnacle. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's kind of like the final shows are kind of like basically put in something you'd worked really hard with, you know, to bed to finish it, but knowing that it had been complete success all the way through and ended on a mm -hmm. high. So I suppose I'd have to agree with you, yeah, the final shows. Or signing our first record deal, that was quite cool as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. And uh, or signing with our management and uh, having some, like, sort of celebratory party at uh, Sanctuary offices and uh, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden coming in. That kind of blew my mind. So that was, <laughs> that was pretty good as well. Our final shows were unbelievably amazing. They were a roller coaster of, of mixed emotions. You know, obviously they were so successful, it was a bit bittersweet, but you know, we definitely felt like it was you know, the right time to, to finish. And uh, it was amazing. Thanks for the support of all the fans and stuff. It was a fantastic send off. Going back to like, you know, places that we've consistently gone to over the last 16 years, like uh, going to Australia and being able, like going to Germany, it sort of, it felt, it definitely felt bittersweet to go to those places and know this is the last time we were going there to perform like ever. And it's like, you know, you get so used to going to, to different countries and you kind of take it for granted. So it was like for the very last show, it was being able to appreciate how lucky we were to be in that position as well. So, and then obviously the, the fans who came out, the people who attended the show made it very, very emotional. And, you know, it's quite heartwarming really. So yeah, made me feel very, uh, very appreciated. Yeah, watching grown men cry. Yeah, watching Matt sob his heart out every night. <laughs> I was saying that bless him. <laughs> But yeah, the, the whole thing leading up to it as well, like, we, uh, we had decided that we were going to call it a day. And we, it was probably about a year before we announced it. And then as soon as we announced it, it was like the, the, the messages we got off people were, was unbelievable. Right? Mm. And then we put the show, like all the shows on sale and they went in minutes, which is like, we didn't expect it all, did we? No, not at all. So yeah, so it was, uh, a bit of a roller coaster of emotions, definitely. But at the end, it's sort of, it's definitely a good way to finish, finish everything up. Life after feeling for a friend for us is the reason we're here. Is we're going to go into tutoring with ACM, fantastic uh, company for work for. I'm very jealous. I think <laughs> if I uh, could step back in time and tell myself that I'd be, you know, working in a place like this, I'd probably be uh, over the moon because I always wanted to do this kind of thing myself, but never got the opportunity. So. Very excited. And the same, I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, to start tutoring at the ACM in London. So yeah, it's fantastic. The college is amazing. Uh, the, the tutors here are fantastic. Everybody's got, you know, an absolute wealth of experience and knowledge. So uh, yeah, like Rich, if I, was, uh, if I was younger, this is definitely something I wish I would have had available to me. So yeah, it's very exciting also continuing playing music as well. Uh, the kind of thing I'm really looking forward to teaching at ACM is probably the in improvisation, interpretation. Absolutely love Im improvising on the instrument and hopefully be able to uh, bring some of that knowledge to some of the students. I'm personally really looking forward to working with people uh, on songwriting. Uh, something that you know, I, I've, I've done with Funeral for a Friend for 16 years and uh, something, something's quite special about you know, watching an idea formulate and sort of hearing a song come together. So, to uh, to help students with that would be would be amazing. I think. Since leaving the band, uh, the kind of things I want to do is spend more time with my family. Obviously, being in a band of funeral for friends statue, obviously we're out busy doing like 200 shows a year and stuff. So obviously that had a bit of a negative impact on my family life. You know, I've I've got two kids and a wife, which. I didn't get to see all the time, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, spending a bit more time with my family. Um, yeah, the same for me, really, spending time with, with my wife and, you know, kind of uh, focusing on our future and, you know, having the kind of everyday aspects of, you know, going home every night, waking up, you know, with each other in the morning. That's something which, when you're not doing that for like 200 days of the year, it can be a bit, uh, 
get a bit dark. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't I think personal goals are the other things. Uh, maybe I'd like to run a marathon, maybe. Something that I, I didn't get a chance to do well in the band. Yeah, cure cancer, third world hunger, you know, end war. <laughs> <laughs> Go, you go, yeah, Rich. I'm going for it. Go for gold. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with. I'll stick with the marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be easier. Yeah. Yes, you will be hearing new music from me. Uh, I've started. It's in its infancy, but I've started a kind of fusion group with a few friends from my local area. Uh, expect mixings of neo soul, jazz, a uh, bit of a mixed bag of stuff. So hopefully, get to show you guys pretty soon. Uh, uh, yeah, currently I'm in a, another band uh, with the funeral for a friend guitarist, Gav. Uh, very different, it's called Born Into This, and it's basically uh, lo-fi, singer, songwriter, acoustic music. So it's very different to Funeral for a Friend, but very fun. So uh, there's some stuff that people can check out. If they uh, just type it in online, they'll find it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll get some more stuff done and hopefully get some tracks out. Uh, later this year. The advice I'd give to bands just starting out is uh, do it for the reason you're doing it. Have fun. Uh, don't take it too seriously to start with because when you start taking it too seriously in the beginning all your focus is on basically making it and all that and you take all the fun out of it and you play shows and you try too hard and the audience sees that and it usually has a really negative effect so just go in there enjoy it and if you're a great band you know you chances are you'll, you'll make it, but just have fun to start with. Don't put too much pressure on yourselves. Uh, I'd say be confident with what you're doing and don't really look at what other bands are doing and what other scenes of music are, you know, what's popular, I guess. It's, you know, if you try to imitate something, you end up doing a pretty poor job of something which is already successful. So it's kind of to stick with what you initially set out to do and the music that comes naturally to you is always the best thing, I think, for a band. Uh, don't be afraid to, to experiment with different styles of music as well. It, normally your best ideas come from, you know, taking something to your bandmates you think, oh, they're going to hate this. So, you know, if you just basically take every possible idea you have and just try and expand it, I think midterns uh, can make great songs. And also, the other thing I would say is that uh, when you do start touring, Remember that all the things you ask for, ultimately you end up paying for. Nothing is free. So that, that'd be my advice. Keep your rider costs down. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Will there be a uh, Funeral for a Friend reunion to her? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, never say never. But uh, I think we've always been a band who are very true to our words. And I think that when we said, that's it, I think that, uh, you know, I think we pretty much we meant it, right? Yeah, hundred mm. percent. I think the only way you'll see us again is if we uh, if we feel we can do something positive musically with the new music, maybe another album. But I highly doubt. No, I can't see that happening. It would it have it would take away from you know the me good memories of the final tour, and it wouldn't be the final tour anymore. Yeah, all those people would be cheated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all those tears would have been for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All of Matt's tears would yeah, have been for nothing. Yeah, all of Matt's tears would have been for nothing. So, yeah, I'd say no. But never say never. <laughs> <laughs>